from a guy that said he's got cancer and he can't come out. And he said, what was there? It was like a three day. I will now call this special workshop meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. Uh, Council, before you, you have a, a copy of the proposed agenda for the workshop, and I would entertain a motion to adopt at this time. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Is there any discussion? Here are none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? First, uh, first item tonight will be a discussion <coughs> rel uh, relative to the declining uh, part of uh, declining the part of grant. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, happy new year and welcome back. We appreciate everything that y'all have done and look forward to a great year. As you'll recall, several months ago, we discussed developments that had been unanticipated relative to the redevelopment of Phillips Park. At that time, we were talking with you about the possibility of rescinding your former approval for the PARDAF grant. That is a $495,000 grant from the state it requires a $500,000 match, which is in your budget. Due to the difficulties which we previously discussed, on your agenda tonight in formal session will be a resolution specifically authorizing the staff to execute and notify, execute the documents and notify the PARDAF uh, uh, agency that we are turning that grant in. Prior to having that formal action, we wanted to give you the opportunity tonight to ask any additional questions you might have on that matter. What we would recommend if you are comfortable turning the grant in is that you would direct us at this time that the $500,000 that is currently earmarked for that project, that $400,000 will be returned to the general fund balance that 100,000 will be left in a Phillips Park Improvement Fund where we will determine over the next several months what things such as rebuilding the picnic shelter that is there today and similar things of that nature could be done with that being brought back to you specifically for approval. So our thought is, do you have, number one, do you have any concern about us going ahead and formally turning in the grant? Number two, how do you feel about <clears throat> designating 400000 of that back to the general fund balance? And number, actually it would be to the four cent reserve, I believe, wherever Gail got it. Gail, where are we sending it? I think it is capital reserve. Capital reserve. Capital reserve. <clears throat> but also continuing to have 100000 in a line item that we will bring back to you for potential improvements that would be allowed under the current how, conditions. How much, how much in potential improvements? No more than one hundred thousand. <clears> the <throat> um, and one of the reasons we're doing going about it at this time and, and, and we're turn, turning this grant back in is, you said it was it would be more advantageous for us for future uh, grant applications in the event yes, things it, change. Yes, sir. All the feedback we've gotten <clears throat> from the state is that. They, they're not going to look down on us for turning it into the em environmental issues that are occurring. They realize that we're waiting for the assessment to take place. That's not going to take place for several years. That puts us out of the range for getting the project complete. So it is, uh, it is much more advantageous for us to politely you know, turn it back in so that that money can be used for other projects in the state. Very good. Mr. Warden. And the plan would still be, the, the or the vision would still be what we hope for this time. So that the 100000 that we're going to be spending will be items that we're not going to waste money on because we're going to be using them to supplement what we can at this point in hopes that down the line we'll get an opportunity for another, another grant. Correct. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. For our vision. And let me give you an example. Uh, we've had very good meetings between the Parks and Recreation staff I'm sorry, and the Recreation and Park staff, both of those staffs, <laughs> along with the building department to look at the picnic shelter that is there today. We've uh, looked at that. What you will recall from visiting that site is the floor of that picnic shelter is actually asphalt. And it actually slopes from one end to the other by about eight inches. So one of the things we're thinking about doing is repouring that floor with a concrete and making it level. Another example would be the current roof of the picnic shelter itself. 
because we're not having to take out the support beams but just simply refurbish the superstructure we could do that those are things that are in the grant now the the negative side of spending any money now is that whatever you spend doesn't count towards your 50 percent match so you're spending if i may use the term you're spending 100 percent of your money not 50 percent of your money on the other hand given the fact that that park is heavily used and the fact that it is going to be at least three maybe more years before the environmental is is accomplished the real question is do you want to leave it as it is our thought is that we will bring back specificity on how the money would be used and only then would it be used so you'll receive a report back from the management that says here's what we want to do if you say no nope, we don't want to do it at that time you can send the rest of that hundred or all of that hundred thousand back to the uh, initiative reserve also I'm in favor of it. Everybody all right? Mm -hmm. I just was going to ask, um, so the 400000 obviously was going to be financed, right? So that No, it was actually no, it was cash. Just, uh, just money had moved, moved just to manage into that project fund. I mean, we were going to spin it out of reserve? Mm -hmm. Capital reserve. Yeah, Capital so reserve. So it would reserve, reduce the budget by that. Right? Well, For no, this year. No, this is not the no. general fund cap reserve. This is the four cent capital, capital reserve. reserve. Uh, yeah. But it, it would help in re debt repayment because that's what it's used for, anyways. Yeah. For capital we use reserve that for fund. fund capital projects. Projects, that are in yeah. the CIP. Less so money you got to borrow. So make that money. No debt. <coughs> with no, not, no, not, not that. Not not for that particular project. Yeah. Sometimes we do borrow, like when we bought the land be, uh, between the bridges for the landing. We did fund that. We did the borrow on that, and then paid the annual payment out of that capital reserve fund. And that. But uh, the other thing is, there is an agenda item on the subject, the resolution to basically return the grant. Do you need a vote or consensus or just direction? No. Fine. I think I think the council, other than the questions they had, uh, voiced approval of that action. Thank you very much. Thanks, you. I will mention to you while Susan and Michael are here, as you know, we have been working without a recreation and parks director. We have made the decision that we're not going to fill that position. And Susan and Michael, uh, their titles have been appropriately changed. They are doing an excellent job. I believe the title. You're all going to have to help me out because the titles <laughs> come and go. Susan, what's your official title? I'm the title? director of recreation services. And Michael? I'm the director of park facilities. Okay. Very nice. <coughs> we will not be asking in the next year's budget to fill or to have that as a budgeted position as a department director. They're doing an excellent job. So, well, good to hear. Congratulations. Mr. Mayor and Council, the next item on your workshop is the Onslow Community Outreach Request for Funding through the Community Development Block Grant Program. Uh, as they come forward, uh, representatives come forward, I need to make a public disclosure on this. For you and the public to know, my wife is a member of the board. Gwen has served in this capacity for approximately two years. When this matter was coming forward, I asked Lily Gray to check with the HUD guidelines and also with John Carter, our handsome and talented and esteemed city attorney, to determine does that in any way put the city or me or her in a conflict? Uh, John, what was the result of your... No, sir. There is. No You're not a decision maker on this. You, Gwen or you, neither one own ownership in it, and this is not a conflict. I think, and again, you're doing exactly the right thing as we discuss public disclosure so the council knows the role your wife plays, but I do not see that there's any conflict of interest as defined under the law. And Lily, you checked with HUD. Yes, what did sir. you find out? There's also no conflict of interest as your wife um, does not have a financial interest in this um, activity. Okay. Just wanted to make that disclosure to you. Thank okay. You. With this, I'm going to turn it over to Don and Theo. Thank you very much there, uh, Mayor Phillips. I'd like the council members, uh, manager, thank you so much for the time this evening. On behalf of the members of the Onslow Community Outreach Board, it's a pleasure to come before you tonight and talk about our, our proposal, our quest, our, our adventure that we want to seek 
uh, assistance with here. Before I dis discuss our interest here or proposal tonight, we'd like to in introduce members of our board members who are with us here tonight. Uh, Ms. Diana DeBuster is here. She's our vice chairman. Uh, Diana, thank you for joining us tonight. Ms. Chrissy O'Daniel, Mr. Gerald Brandon, and of course our executive director, Mr. Theo McClammy. I sincerely appreciate the assistance of staff here who've worked with us here. I'd like to also recognize Ms. Lily Gray, Community Development Administrator, who's also been very supportive in helping us get information as we uh, have begun our venture and looking at this proposal here. This evening, on behalf of Oslo Community Outreach, I wish to present to you our interest in a one and a half million dollar investment in the New River neighborhood. Our desire is to use a building in this neighborhood that's currently been uh, not available through a, a large commercial lease, but to this uh, building has now become available. The lease is up and it's now become available and up on the market. And our interest is to pursue this building as a hub for expanded services that we already operate and provide new services to the New River neighborhood. Our current location at 600 Court Street has served us well. From the beginning, it was a grand start, but a smaller start. And as we have grown and our vision has grown, our current building and the need for a larger building is critical to improving and expanding our services as part of the outreach. The current location at 600 Court Street has represented an investment from the purchase and continued renovations have represented an investment of over a half a million dollars since we've moved there. Thousands of individuals have benefited from the services of the outreach and also those services that the city have helped to advance through the support of the outreach. Since the 1990s, thousands of volunteers have come to downtown to participate in our programs and to assist us in providing services to those in need. From the very beginning in the early 90s, we received encouragement, support, and approval by the city to locate downtown. Your predecessors, as well as former board members of the outreach, knew that this site was a great start, but that this site would not be or work forever. In one word, it is just too small. We've never been able to house all of our programs here at the site. We can now operate a round the clock shelter because we have to vacate the space that is used by the shelter to allow for soup kitchen operations. And just as a note, we are all aware of the forthcoming uh, freezing temperatures that are about to descend upon the Onslow County area that are already <coughs> sweeping across the nation. The between Wednesday night and Thursday morning temperatures would be below 18 degrees have been predicted here in this area here. At seven o'clock on Thursday morning, our full shelter of 28 beds will need to be emptied. They will need to be emptied so that the common areas that these sh our shelter clients uh, serve and work in and get prepared and all can be vacated so that we can prepare hundreds of meals for those who are in need in the cold for Thursday morning. This is a stressful situation. This is a stressful reality. This is a reality that we face when these temperatures and these events occur because of the need for that space there. Our current area does not even offer productive meeting space. Even our board has to seek other areas to meet uh, to, for, to conduct our business there. We have made the best use of all the available space, but there's no real storage for food. During food drives, decisions have to be made as to what to keep and what to give away immediately. An ideal situation would provide enough freezer space, dry package area, and storage space that we could store our food items so we could use them continually and that we would be prepared for whatever comes forth there. In addition, our site cannot even be used as an effective disaster relief operations center or support area for our community here. Now, upon the opportunity to from leaving this building and pursuing a new building, we in turn, we intend to return the downtown building to commercial use. And we want to move to a different location where we hope to leverage investments and interest to improve that location. Since the outreach has been downtown, we have seen significant improvements in this area here. We've been a part of helping to advance some of the improvements and we've greatly had benefited as others downtown 
from the significant partnerships with the city. And in addition to the new renovations and innovations downtown, we have created value. The building at the purchase time, and Mr. Buster remembers it very well back there, was less than $80,000. Current appraisals uh, show it being valued over three times that now. We recognize that this would be an important asset for commercial development in downtown in the future. Now to the potential new site. To no one's surprise, it's the former site of the Piggly Wiggly at 1210 Hargett Street. We have used this site for Christmas cheer distribution several times and we're quite familiar with the building. You know Christmas cheer is nearly 50 years old and that program is really a really keepsake and namesake for Onslow County and for the city of Jacksonville and its service to needy children and their families. We've put a bid in for this building and we're in the due diligence period at this time here. I'd like to point out that this is our second time in attempting to pursue this building. A year ago in November, we, this building came forward or available. We submitted a, what we thought was a reasonable bid as other competitors did and we were turned down. And we were very saddened by that because we thought we had sought a location and thought we had sought a price of fair value. Uh, the due diligence and contract period expired for the people in pursuit of that. The building has come back open. Again, uh, through a competitive process, we've had at this point through the due diligence, our bid accepted. And we're working forward now to pursue that. We are, this is why we're in the designing phase and in getting all our details together. And that's why the city is our first stop in the further consideration of this building. We've been partners all the way, and as a partner, we want to keep you fully informed and make you aware of our efforts here. Our vision is for the building to be a significant influence and improvements to the neighborhood. We have a vision for the building to become a community resource, both as a meeting location, but also as an impetus for housing and social programming in the neighborhood. We know that this area is a grocery store and food desert where residents cannot easily walk to a store for daily essentials. We want to consider entrepreneurial efforts that could help advance, advance the need for fresh food in this area here. We want to work with our, our farmer markets, our food pantries, and local support groups here to get this location on, to help us to put them on a regular tour to help us provide essential fresh food for this neighborhood. These entrepreneurial efforts would be the advance from this building and could include other incubation ideas for the neighborhood. We also know that the housing in this area is in transition and its future will continue to be in transition. Through a partnership, here is a vision of what could be possibly achieved here. Consider the area immediately adjacent to the site. What if this area was transformed over the years into transitional housing to assist persons who have become homeless or been homeless or facing tough conditions or in support of our transitional veterans. Consider partnerships that can, could transform other areas between Hargett Street and Lejeune Boulevard to a mix of single family homes and structures for our senior citizens. Now consider having special programming that works in concert with the congregations in the area as well as other community groups to provide socialization for those who basically are confined to the limits of the New River neighborhood. Consider social gatherings where the neighborhood feels invested in the future and celebrates the unique elementary school there and other improving structures in the community. With such entrepreneurial efforts, the socialization and partnership with others, including a congregations in this area, we believe the vision of an improved neighborhood can be a reality. We would work to have our building aesthetically pleasing and a source of pride for this neighborhood and for this city. We would consider making our main entrance off Lejeune Boulevard through Richards Downs to focus on our core program with expanded parking to the side and Lejeune Boulevard side of the building. The front toward Hargett Street would represent our entrepreneurial and community support areas there and possible future commercialization of the front parking area. 
the side toward Robertson Drive would welcome our guests and neighborhood citizens. And for the inside of the building, the largest portion of the building would be seasonally used, seasonally used for Christmas cheer. Now, in addition to Christmas cheer, additionally, this area would, would house community meetings, be a warehouse for food drives, and as needed, a well-stocked disaster relief center, as well as a needed community resource center for this area. We're hopeful that the area can be launched for other entrepreneurial efforts and serve this community through this flexible space here. Now, other areas of the building would serve our nutritional programs and our traditional soup kitchen. Housing programs would find a home in the building where we would want to launch our efforts to help the neighborhood and to deal with our immediate shelter needs. There would also be room for our social programs, workspace, meeting rooms, and the administrative functions overseeing the programs and projects. We really feel that this flex space could also help us bring forth some day shelter opportunities so that these individuals during these critical times here of heat and cold would not be turned into our neighborhoods that would have opportunities for engagement, education, and support uh, during, during the daytime efforts here. Our vision works to advance the neighborhood and provide for expanded services and would be a, would, and would be a part of our effort to be a catalyst for improvement. This is our proposal. We appreciate the opportunity to provide this to you. We're still in the due diligence phase, but would appreciate any questions that the council would have. Any questions? Let me, uh, before, while you're thinking of questions, let me mention this. The Community Development Block Grant Program has as one of its goals, of course, anything that helps lower income neighborhoods and part of that also has to do with the actual homeless addressing the needs of the homeless it's a nationwide goal the agenda item that you have tonight is not an item that says you are going to uh, if you choose to that you're going to provide money for this purpose it is an agenda item that will formally change the program and i think it's important for lily to come forward, if you would, a second. Do you mind sitting next to Mr. Bittner? And explain a little bit about what the agenda item is saying, and then we can have a few more comments. What we're asking you to do, we um, had addressed this in our five-year consolidated plan, and we have planned and pr programmed this funding for next fiscal year and our future years as we saw that they might have a need. But we would all ask that you authorize us to amend our current annual action plan for FY1415. We are discontinue, pr proposing to discontinue our CREATE program, which was our partnership with Coastal Carolina Community College. We know that those funds will not be used, and then allocate them into this activity so that the funds will be available at such time that you are prepared to actually disperse the funds. So, so is that, that are these funds we're talking about what was uh, formerly dedicated to the CREATE program? Yes, sir. We'll close that, um, it's the CREATE revolving pro, uh, loan fund. We will close that fund and move the funding into the actual CDBG budget that we use on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. this won't impact our ability to continue our work downtown as far as rehab and homes mm -hmm. and no, stuff. Okay. And the other thing, you know, because we did not want to, to, uh, to do anything that was negative to the college. As we analyze this request, we met with the college and they have confirmed that they do not have the student enrollment in those classes that could actually use this money. And they have not had that. That's why the, the pool in that particular line item has grown substantially over the last three years. So you should not look at this agenda item as, are you picking the college or are you picking Onslow Community right. Outreach? That door is no longer open at the college level. If it does come open again, then we can readdress that at a future date. Any questions that you have of Lily? Well, well, describe the CREATE a little bit oh, more to refresh my memory, I guess. The CREATE program was a program we, we partnered with the college, and the students that were enrolled in the construction program actually built the affordable housing, and we did not have to pay for labor because it was training for them, and we used the funding that was in this pool to pay for the materials. And so that was a cost savings for us to be able to produce affordable housing, and it provided job training for the students, real hands-on training beyond the, the book training that they were getting. So, so it's, it's been, been excellent. It's been several years since they've done that. Yes. Okay. 
and and because the obviously the construction industry here has slowed <coughs> down, the number of people enrolling those classes have dwindled to you know, very, very few. few, very few and it has actually been, I believe I'm correct, it's been five years At since least. any of that money went to that program mm -hmm. in college. Yeah. We were hoping it would come back, but it hasn't, and so we're prepared to release it for another project. So the funding for the CREATE program came from the CDBG allocations? Yes. yes. Okay. There's without a doubt a need here uh, for, you know, the continued <coughs> operations of what y'all do out there in the community. I support it. <coughs> so the actual agenda item is just directs Lily to go through the process to amend the plan and then you it'll be brought back for approval after she goes through the process. Will you continue to use the 600 Court Street location at all? Yes sir. We're going to need to, to transition approximately a three to five year plan to make the make the stretch to to make it into the facility there. Uh, we are that's part of the due diligence now is preparing those timelines. Uh, a full business plan, fund development plan, uh, to also, after vetting it here with the city and uh, getting feedback here, is to begin, begin vetting it with our, the city residents and the community and, and the residents also. Because we need to address that face to face. Um, it was a bold venture to go down to 600 Court Street in the 90s. And um, it, it's, uh, even though we're up a couple miles here, neighbors want to be good neighbors and they need to be fully informed about opportunity and impact and what potential, especially the potential of good things through this investment in this community building. Is there any zoning issues involved? <coughs> yes, use? There is a zoning issue on this in that uh, the current UDO as adopted says that there cannot be any type of a homeless shelter within 500 feet of a residential structure. If they are to occupy this, then you will need to look at modifying the UDO. The staff and I have talked about this where what you would consider doing is this. If it is within 500 feet, it requires a special use permit, which would be an advertised public hearing, and it would be an action that the council would take as with any other special use permit. The other thing I think that's important, uh, Mr. Dr. Herring mentioned the, the budget of $1.5 million. I think it's important for council to understand what's involved in that number. Yes, sir. Well, it would be the would be the purchase of the building, which is how much? Which would be at this time uh, seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. Then it would be the necessary renovations of the building uh, in priority order. There, uh, looking to the community support area there, that large flex space there. Uh, then uh, transitioning there and bringing on the shelter. Uh, food serve the, our housing support, our food support, their administration will be joining us there in that three to five year space. And I think that we all need to realize one of the re city code requirements, and, and believe me, we have met, uh, Danny Bryant was very kind yes. to walk through this building. One of the first things they're going to have to do is install a fire sprinkler system. This is a 27,000 square foot building, and that alone will cost probably a hundred to a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Is there any county participation? Well at this time we want to first bet with our partners here or who we've worked with and all. There are opportunities for partnership and we're going to be approaching all of our partners but there is opportunity for county support here and all. This area uh, as availability of a disaster relief operations area there, um, there we're still woefully short of those in the county here and in the city area there. Uh, they're always growing and improving there. But this flex space, uh, up in the lifetime of this building, it's never flooded in there. And that roof has only been, the roof has only been compromised one time. But it was not compromised to the point it couldn't be inhabited. And that roof has, was th during one of the recent hurricanes there. And that has been, been uh, patched or, or resolved there. Do you get any county funding now, Don? Yes, we do. Yes, sir. We get approximately $40,000 a year from the county. Uh, they do have a direct impact on what we do, and they recognize the services that we provide. Our soup kitchen trucks are across this county here, and our homeless shelter, or our shelter clients are from across this county also. And is there any concern about the businesses across uh, in the shopping center? Do you feel that that will be any issues? Well, I hope in how we're looking to position this to keep that front, the Hargett Street area, to make that the community front. 
uh, that our core services are delivered from the rear of that building or from, from the back of that streets there. Uh, recognizing the, the flex building use of this area for that day shelter, which would be a critical need in this community here. We, we are an element that helps by night and, and helpless by day. And we hope that would actually be a significant improvement for all of our community. Let me also address that. Remember in the UDO, one of the stipulations is that as uh, the director of uh, development services, Reggie Goodson has the authority to require a community meeting on any rezoning. If you do change the UDO where you have a special use permit, then what we will do is require a public meeting before yes. that comes to you so that the property owners, both residential and commercial, are notified. On the other hand, I know that Don and his group are good stewards and they most likely will reach out to especially the commercial ventures long before we get to that point. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, do you think any of the upfitting could possibly trigger any stormwater improvements, requirements, or anything like that? My, my guess would be no from this standpoint. Uh, the site is 99.9% impervious you know, because of all of the previous paving and the building size and so forth. But you know, when you deal with government, you never know. <laughs> Just curiosity, how many square feet do you currently have on Court Street? I'll defer to Phil on that one. Mm -hmm. About 5,000 square feet. 5,000. So this would be a significant uh, increase in our capacity. But now, in, in, in fairness to that, the 5,000 square feet is your daily operation of admin, soup, and shelter. Yes, sir. Uh, the vast majority of this building is not used for that. It would be, because if my memory is correct, your traditional goal for a Christmas cheer space is what? 14, 14 to 18,000 square feet. That's your community space? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Or convertible space. Yes, sir. That flex space, so to speak, there. Recognizing that we're going to need some significant firewalls in here to provide. Um, and all. But that flex space would be heated and cooled differently than how we would treat the other square footage that serve the clients and other people on a regular basis, daily basis. <clears throat> All right. Is there uh, any other any other questions or comments? Um, and I this was a uh, this was an agenda item tonight on the tonight. on the regular yes, agenda. Sir. So <clears throat> we'll take action at that time. Yes. <clears throat> First step. Correct me if I uh, on this. Uh, the request for action is what. Request for action will be to modify the, the annual action plan for okay. FY 1415 and reallocate funds from the CREATE program to this activity. All right, thank you. Okay, so we're good then, unless yes. anybody has something else. Thank you, Don. Thank Appreciate you so it. much, Mayor. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you very much. May we take a five minute recess? Absolutely. Thank you.